Hello YouTube. Today I want to talk about some of the most recent and uh, fascinating developments in the R Russian science, especially military science, but not only. Most of it is not really well known in the West, but it's just like the tip of the iceberg because there is a lot of work that's being uh, done right now in Russia and the interesting uh, should I say outcomes are coming uh, to, to, to our attention for example the Navy of Russia has been being equipped with the systems which can blind the adversary and cause hallucinations and this was reported in the REA news in early February of 2019 in Russia uh, based on the information provided by the Ross Electronica Holding, which is uh, creating the so-called uh, 5 v 42 filling stations of the visual optical interferences. And the station that they are creating is uh, designated for the blinding of the adversary at night and during the dusk. And um, the way it's working it's based on the modulation of the brightness of the light radiance this uh, apparatus was being tested on the people who willingly wanted to become guinea pigs uh, during the um, uh, during the uh, testing of uh, weapons and uh, targeting during the uh, test with this film they say they couldn't observe the targets 20% uh, said that they had hallucinogenic effect uh, which was described as a, a bright spot in front of in front of their eyes and 45% complained about dizziness um, feeling disoriented in space and nausea according to Ross Electronica. Well, these stations are being um, put on the Russian uh, on the Russian Navy sh ships Admiral Gorshkov and Admir Admiral Kasatonov, oh, and right now they're being tested, and more are being built for two more ships. So, this is as much as we know today. There may be some more information coming about, but that's a state from the Russian. Uh, media, so to say, because n n nobody can have independent sources <coughs> of such weapon de uh, developments. But there is something else that's taking place in Russia. Because Russia continues its research of plasma engine for super fast space travel. And the scientists from uh, Russia and uh, other countries in the world see uh, plasma rocket technology as a very interesting possibility. Physicists from the Butker Institute of uh, Nuclear Physics of the Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences, it's located in Novosibirsk, a very interesting town. They're preparing a ra another round of experiments which are aimed at successfully harnessing the power of thermonuclear plasma for the use in a rocket engine. This institute, very interesting place, was created in 1958 and it was based on the then laboratory of new methods of acceleration. Academician Boot Bootker was in charge of it. The experiments um, are scheduled to begin later this spring and they will follow up on earlier successful tests which actually confirm feasibility of confining plasma in an experimental setup using parameters suitable for a rocket engine. Uh, the possibilities of using this for space travel are incredible but this is only the beginning because this actually could make us reach Moon and Mars and other planets much quicker. What's interesting is that at the end of 2018 this institute began operating a very unique installation which is called SMOLA or Spiral Based Magnetic Open Trap with the setup serving as the first step towards the creation of a fusion reactor. This plasma trap allowed scientists to work on confining plasma in a linear magnetic system. 
which we, we, we hope and think can eventually help lead to the creation of the, the prototype plasma engine which is actually suitable for space travel and the Russian experiments the, actually demonstrated that the effect exists and that the space engine works and it means reducing plasma losses as well so we will see what will happen later this spring but they're very much interested in their if for example russian energomash power engineering company is involved in the production of rocket engines and they plan to build high powder high powered electro delays plasma rocket engine russian skurchatov institute and the design bureau from the chemical automatics they reported that they were working on the plasma based engine for space travel back in 2016 of course you will see other countries especially the united states involved in similar programs and um, it's you know plasma based rocket engines are one of the several proposed options for human exploration of other planets not only in our solar system but well beyond so it pays to keep an eye on the developments of the plasma based rocket engine engines and not only in russia of course well there is more in russia than that for example did you know that they're working on the model of an optical tractor beam to capture particles based on new artificial materials that's a research done in the itmo institute uh, in russia one of the leading higher education and research institutes they specialize in information technology optical design and engineering and it's it's a very large state university in saint petersburg and one of the russia's national research universities very very interesting place um, and if you ever have a chance to study abroad maybe you will consider going there now the beam that they're moving on that they're the, the beam that the project is moving to develop is capable of actually moving particles or cells toward the radiation source and there was a study that showed that the hyperbolic metal surfaces are promising for experiments and creating the tractor beam as well as for practical applications now we know about the tractor beams because of star wars star trek series of you know ufos doing something to animals which they're trying to kidnap like cows and others but seriously scientists are trying to obtain such beams now and there are several ways to make objects move towards a source of light but it's all sm small particles and atoms in, in, instead of real beings that are being moved by such tractor beams so that's what the ITMO University is working on and they suggested using metamaterials to create such tractor beams metamaterials are artificial periodic structures with unusual optical properties consisting of repetitive elements and in 2016 the scientists from that university proposed another model of the tractor beam which was based on the plasmon resonance and propagating surface plasmon waves oscillations of the electron gas near the metal surface this is fascinating stuff and i think they will have more developments later on so it's something else uh, worth looking at as for the arctic regions i've told you in my videos about the special attention which the russian army is now paying to the area and i don't think it's only because of the adversaries and fight for the natural resources because there's a quite a lot of ufo and uso reports coming from the area for years and of course the russians and the soviets have been interested in that area for a long time well recently they put a separate radar unit it was stationed at the Wrangel island in the eastern military district and they were doing very interesting uh, tests using the sopka 2 radar facility and they were 
According to the plan, a group of small sized targets were making a flight at different altitude and speed simulated by the adversaries unmanned aerial vehicles. So a radar facility en route was used during the training in order to receive and process information about the flight data of the small sized targets. As you know, some UFOs are not gigantic motherships or cigars or cylinders. Some of them that have been reported over the Arctic, for example, and I've read for years such reports, are actually of the small size. And the radar unit was timely detected and identified over 10 air targets. Information was collected and transmitted to the Air Defense Command post in the district. In the Sopka 2 en route radar facility has been commissioned on that Wrangell Island, very interesting place, in 2016. So that's quite interesting, but that's not all about the Arctic. Because the first Russian satellite for weather forecasting and monitoring climate and environment in the Arctic region, Arctica-M, is planned to be sent to the near-Earth orbit in June 2019. And this launch of the of Soyuz 2.1B vehicle from the Baikonur Cosmodrome with Fregat Booster and the first hydrometeorological satellite is scheduled for this summer. It's very interesting because they will be able to spy on a number of regions down below and they're quite interested in what's going on in Arctica. So the in the Arctic region, so the Arctic M will periodically move away from the Earth's surface and shoot multi-scale images. It will have a rotation speed different from Earth, so its shooting angle will change continuously. And after the launch of the two devices of this series into orbit, the hydrometeorological center of Russia will continuously receive operational information about the atmosphere and the surface at the Earth Pole. And I'm sure they'll spy on adversaries, whether terrestrial or extraterrestrial. Um, but we also need to talk about another very interesting development, much more powerful. This is the so-called Poseidon unmanned vehicle and um, Underwater tests capable of carrying nuclear warheads of the strategic unmanned vehicle Poseidon, the development of which is the, in the message to the Federal Assembly, was told by Vladimir Putin. They have begun in Russia in December 20, 2015 of last year. This is what the TASS uh, source told some people in the Russian industrial complex and I'm sure some Westerners found out because that's what they wanted people to find out as well uh, because in this area of the oceans or seas it's protected uh, from the espionage or intelligence of a probable enemy and uh, this development is underway I'm using bureaucratic language which is in use in Russian media sometimes but it's very interesting because there is little known about it and in my opinion uh, it's not so much the Americans or the Chinese or NATO but the USOs which are very active in the areas of Russian seas that may be the final target of the Poseidon as far as we know the Poseidon should be transferred to the Russian Navy by the end of the program which is about from 2018 to 2027. So that's when it's going to be happen. It's um, the drones are being uh, launched from the submarine. They go to the target at the depth of more than one uh, kilometer at the speed of 200 kilometers, so about 110 knots. That's about all we know, but it's it's a very serious development, very interesting, and uh, I'm sure we'll find out more. So, in my opinion, the Russians are very much concerned about UFOs and USOs. Um, maybe uh, to the extent more than they are about the United States, States and NATO. And have my own ideas about the cooperation between uh, our governments. But it pays to pay attention to 
uh, developments in Russia. They have very capable scientists and um, I'm sure we'll find out much more in the future and I'll let you know. Thank you for your attention to my videos. Please subscribe and uh, please tell others. Thank you.